Hey again everybody, Dr. Bolin here with our microbiology shorts. This is just a condensation of our uh, shorts that we go over in our larger videos uh, talking about microorganisms. Um, I just want to invite you to come watch our larger videos if you want a more in-depth explanation of the topic. Uh, feel free to subscribe, uh, hit the subscribe button uh, below uh, or donate to my Patreon if you like these videos. So let's get started. All right, so we've got our, our story here, and this takes place at an animal museum. Notice that the colors are very purplish, like all of our gram-positive bugs. And this is the entrance of the animal museum. So think entrance, think enterococci. Who's waiting in line? Well, actually, uh, so we notice up here, uh, there's a porta potty for these people waiting in line. And uh, the porta potty is to help you remember that Fecalis and Fecium are here, and everything on the right side are going to pertain to Enterococcus, and everything on the left side is going to pertain to Strep bovis. So, okay, who's waiting in line? Well, Grandma's waiting in line. Grandma, Gamma, Gamma Hemolysis. And Grandma decided to bring her little shit of a grandson with her, and he is starting fires. I don't know why she brought him with, but... Think of pyromaniac, PYR positive. Enterococci are PYR positive. Despite her grandson being a little brat, she brought him a pretzel to snack on while waiting in line. Think of pretzels are salty, salty, 6.5% sodium chloride. Enterococcus grows on 6.5% sodium chloride. Okay, so what are these animals here? Well, we got our bile crocodile right in the middle, so it pertains to both. Both of these can grow on bile salts and uh, thus cause a biliary tree infection, but for that we're mostly thinking of Enterococcus. Our porta potty here also suggests uh, and reminds us of a UTI. Enterococcus causes 5% of UTI infections. Notice that while Grandma waits uh, with her uh, snotty little grandson that she is knitting, and uh, like nice grandmas do, and she's knitting a heart. And she's knitting a heart because Enterococcus and Strep bovis both cause endocarditis. Okay, now they're done with the animal museum and they're getting picked up by the van. And this van is locked. Notice the big X on it. And it's locked because Enterococcus is often vancomycin resistant. And what do we do when we've got vancomycin resistant uh, Enterococcus? We will treat it with linazolid by the lines on the van or by this cute little tiger, Tigacycline. On the left side, we're dealing with Strep bovis. Remember that the uh, bovis is bovine, that's the Latin for cow. So we've got a nice little cow here. And notice that the cow is far away from the pretzel. Cows don't eat pretzels, do they? Or at least they shouldn't. Uh, so Strep bovis does not grow on sodium chloride. Also remember that this cow has a cancer awareness ribbon, a colon cancer awareness ribbon, and that's because you should think bovis in the blood, cancer in the colon. It's got purple penicillin pencil horns here, uh, but I really don't recommend uh, thinking about penicillin when you've got uh, endocarditis because there's so many bacteria that are resistant that penicillin is probably not the best first choice, uh, at least for exam purposes. The other drug we can use for strep bovis is much more preferable, and that is our three-sided ax for ceftriaxone. So third-generation cephalosporins are good for, uh, for strep bovis. All right, that's all I've got for you. Hopefully you enjoyed this and enjoyed the, the gram-positive cocci. Next, we're going to talk about the gram-positive bacilli. So I will see you there.